Hi friends, my name is Jess and today I'm going to read to you one of my favorite stories. It's called A House is a House for Me and it was written by Marianne Hoberman. One of the reasons that I love this book is because the woman who drew the pictures, the illustrator, Betty Frazier, is someone who I know. Let's see what it says inside. A house is a house for me. This book has a dedication to Norman, builder of my house. That's a nice message to put to someone in a book. Here we go with the story. A hill is a house for an ant, an ant. A hive is a house for a bee. A hole is a house for a mole or a mouse. And a house is a house for me. See, there's someone in a tree house. A web is a house for a spider. A bird builds its nest in a tree. There's nothing so snug as a bug in a rug. And a house is a house for me. See, we can see a spider in a web and some little eggs in a bird's nest. Have you ever seen a spider in a web? That's where it lives. A coop? That's a house for a chicken. What does a chicken say? Cluck, cluck, cluck. A sty, that's a house for a sow. A fold, that's where sheep all gather to sleep. A barn, that's a house for a cow. It is also, of course, a house for a horse. See all these animals on the farm. They all have special houses too. A kennel's a house for a dog, a dog. A dog is a house for a flea. But when a dog strays, a flea sometimes stays. And then it may move on to me. Houses for rabbits, see these rabbits, are hutches. A house for a mule is a shed. A castle's a house for a duchess. A bed bug beds down in a bed. Mosquitoes like mud holes or puddles. Whales need an ocean or sea. A fish or a snake may make do with a lake. But a house is a house for me. Looks like this house is at the beach. A shell is a dwelling for shellfish, for oysters and lobsters and clams. Each snail has a shell and each turtle as well, but not any lions or lambs. Lions live out in the open. Monkeys live up in a tree. Hippos live down in a river. Now, what do you know about me? An igloo's a house for an Inuit, a teepee's a house for a Cree, a Pueblo's a house for a Hopi, and a wigwam may hold a Mohi. A garage is a house for a car or a truck, a hangar's a house for a plane, a dock or a slip is a house for a ship, and a terminal's house for a train. A husk is a house for a corn ear. A pod is a place for a pea. A nutshell is a hut for a hickory nut. But what is a shelter for me? A glove is a house for a hand, a hand. A stocking is a house for a knee. A shoe or a boot is a house for a foot. And a house is a house for me. Look at this, looks like it's winter time and they're making a little house in the snow. And look who's buried underneath the, in a little house of their own underground, a chipmunk. 
A box is a house for a tea bag. A teapot's a house for some tea. If you pour me a cup and I drink it all up, the tea house will turn into me. Cartons are houses for crackers. Castles are houses for kings. The more that I think about houses, the more things are houses for things. And if you get started in thinking, I think you will find it is true. The more that you think about houses for things, the more things are houses to you. Look at all these things. It looks like a bowl is a house for a salad. And the toothpaste tube is a house for the toothpaste. A bag for some groceries. And look at even a little baby kangaroo called a joey. Lives with his mama. And a gerbil or a hamster in a cage. Do you have a gerbil or a hamster at home? Barrels are houses for pickles. And bottles are houses for jam. A pot is a spot for potatoes. A sandwich is home for some ham. Do you like a ham sandwich? I do. The cookie jar is home to the cookies. The bread box is home to the bread. My coat is a house for my body. My hat is a house for my head. Perhaps I have started far-fetching. Perhaps I'm stretching some things. A mirror's a house for reflections. A throat is a house for a hum. But once you get started in thinking, you think and you think and you think how pockets are houses for pennies and pens can be houses for ink. How peaches are houses for peach pits and sometimes are houses for worms. How trash cans are houses for garbage and garbage makes houses for germs. And envelopes, earmuffs, and eggshells, and bathrobes, and baskets, and bins, and rag bags, and rubbers, and roasters, and tablecloths, toasters, and tins. Look at all these things. This looks like a soup can is home for some soup. And maybe this eggshell was home to an egg but maybe someone ate it for breakfast. And once you get started in thinking this way, it seems that whatever you see is either a house or lives in a house. And a house is a house for me. A book is a house for a story. A rose is a house for a smell. Do you smell the roses or any kind of flowers? It's springtime now, so the flowers will be coming soon. My head is a house for a secret, a secret I never will tell. A flower's at home in a garden, a donkey's at home in a stall. Each creature that's known has a house of its own. Do you see all these wonderful animals? We see a giraffe with a very long neck and a penguin that lives in Antarctica, maybe. Monkeys, they live in trees, kangaroos and pandas. And that looks like it might be a beaver and even an elephant with a parrot on its trunk and a toucan, and some other friends up here. Each creature that's known has a house of its own, and the earth is a house for us all. We all live together on the planet Earth, and a house is a house for me. Thank you so much for reading this story with me. I hope that you read lots of stories at home, and get to explore all the kinds of houses that you see all around us. Thanks for spending some time with me today. Bye-bye.